Hello. Ever since I was a little kid, I learned to interpret the world through my artwork. I was born with a hearing disability and eventually and um cerebral palsy and I found out that I was better able to express myself through my art making. I eventually found my calling as a woodworker and a furniture designer. And even then, I loved to challenge the preconceived notions of furniture. For example, why should I have four identical legs in my writing desk? Likewise, if it's a writing desk, why not write on it? So I got my favorite color blue crayon and put my initials on the uh, writing desk. In addition, I think all chairs should have ears. <laughs> I, this piece was an homage to a Scottish designer, Charles Rennie Macintosh, who was known for his very high back chairs. This piece is called Mickey Macintosh. <laughs> um, in the 35 years of being an artist, I found that one of the best ways of um, rejuvenating my work is to participate in artists and residencies. One of the first residencies was in the south of France. I think residencies are transformational you're working in a new studio. You're immersed in a, in a different culture, sometimes a different language. And I think it's bound to have a positive effect on your creativity. This is the piece I made when I returned from France. It's called Ooh La La Vanity. Uh, Ooh La La was the only French word that I knew. In England, of course, language wasn't a problem. I studied arts and crafts furniture from England, but the best part of that experience was that I developed a taste for scotch. <laughs> and when I returned, I made furniture that was only designed to hold two bottles of scotch and four glasses. <laughs> and I also have done cabinet for te tequila, but that's a different story. <laughs> um, a pivotal and personal residency was six months in Japan. Um, it is the land of my heritage. My grandparents immigrated from there. But the most valuable part of that experience was to see and understand the subtleties of Japanese aesthetics and crafts. And it's a very humbling experience. So this was my attempt to follow that same aesthetic as a bench. Five years ago, I had a residency in New York, and I decided that I needed to do some history research about my family history. Um, my uh, family was directly affected by World War II. 1941, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. And 1942, Franklin D. Roosevelt signed Executive Order 906, forcing the evacuation of all Japanese Americans from their homes and to forcing them to abandon their businesses. This is the Mochita family from the Bay Area. They were on their way to the Camp Manzanar. Every man, woman, and child were issued a tag with their name, a government-issued number, and the destination camp. I did a series of work called Executive Order 9066. They were dioramas made of wood, archival photographs, 
and found objects. I found myself returning to the tag. I realized that the tags were emblematic of the experience. So I decided that I would create the tag project. I wanted to recreate all the tags for every Japanese American that was interned during 1942. That's a fucking lot of tags. I mean, you know, sorry. I mean, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry. Um, uh, I didn't mean to say 120,000 tags. So, Using the government database, I was able to, first of all, get friends and family to help. And after a while, the family would see me coming and they'd run the other direction. I'm <laughs> chasing after. Um, but then friends of friends found out about it. Communities from all over the city found out about the project and they offered their services. They really wanted to be a part of this project. It was really overwhelming. Um, the tag project became kind of took on a life of its own. And I realized that it became a valuable tool for outreach, awareness, education, and advocacy. We not only discussed Japanese American internment but we also saw its relevance to 9-11 and the treatment of Muslim Americans, um, the immigration law that was passed in Arizona. These things are very relevant. Most of all, the tag project was not mine. It was ours. It belonged to all the people who volunteered. And also, it reconnected me with my Japanese-American community. And I didn't know very many before then, but now I have a lot of new friends. And then last of all, it taught me as an artist to be able to rethink my process. How can I use my art to do more than just be pretty? So, thank you very much.